Amen. Amen. All right. Well, as you guys all know, uh, Libby, uh, I asked her to do a two two part series on how uh, what to, how to deal with offenses, how to not get offended, and then what to do if you get offended. And tonight's the second part of that. And she taught last week, and she did a great job. Everybody who was here for that really gave her a bunch of kudos. It was really great. You did a really good job, Libby. So much so that she had had uh, she wanted me to make that announcement on Shabbat. So I made that announcement on Shabbat, and we did that. So Libby uh, is going to continue on with part two tonight. And um, this is going to be really good because she's got some really, really good scripture, a couple of stories um, to share. And it's really powerful, everything that she's going to say tonight. So I want to encourage you guys, take notes. We are going to, we're doing a, a, a PowerPoint presentation, um, but we will pull away from the PowerPoint from time to time uh, to ask questions. And so feel free at any given time to, to ask a question. And again, uh, you want to do a real quick synopsis. Uh, at That's all, what I was going to do. Okay, so just great minds about think. What we did last week. Great minds think alike. Go ahead. Huh? Okay, and yeah. and I want to yeah. include, you know, engagement. See if you guys remember what what. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many people were here last week, but anyway. So yes, the title of the whole series was "Offense from Saul to Saul." Okay, and. I did an Old Testament case study and a New Testament case study. And the Old Testament was actually King Saul. And we talked about, we did some character development. We read about how he was in the beginning when Samuel um, approached him to anoint him, the first king of Israel. And he... Um, what else? What else did we learn from about him? We learned that he prophesied. You guys can speak up whenever you want. I, I only remember Jacob being here and maybe Leah. But anyway, um, and he, it says it's written, and this was in 1 Samuel chapters 9 and 10, that we, we built all this character uh, background on King Saul says that God transformed his heart and that he was prophesying. So then we jumped eight chapters later after the whole David and Goliath uh, scenario. And these women were yelling, oh, Saul has killed his thousands, but David is ten thousands. And that was the moment. That was the pivot point where King Saul let offense in. OK, and it says in the, it's written that he eyed David from then on. So we talked about uh, that pivot point. And in between, we reviewed what happened from this humble God uh, heart transformed um, prophesying man to eyeing David. And as we know, persecuting David and seeking to kill him and all this. What happened in between? Do you guys remember? I'm going to pick on Jacob. I can't help it. What do you remember? Well, so Saul basically got offended by David. And then he got really jealous uh, because he didn't recognize his kingdom gifts. And then he basically went on an entire thing trying to kill David but what happened between chapter 9 and 10, where he was this humble guy, to that point that he got so offended? What were some of the things that we went over? Do you remember? I remember is that he was super humble and that and that he was like, who am I? I'm just a Benjamite. And right. can I have some Benjamite? He didn't say that because he's not <laughs> from Australia. All right. Well, we celebrated Purim a couple of months ago, didn't we? Remember that? Yeah. Okay, so King Saul didn't obey, okay? God told him to get rid of all the Amalekites, and he did not obey, and that left a relative of who? King Haman. I mean, Haman. And Saul was actually a relative of Mordecai. So because Saul disobeyed the Lord, Mordecai had to deal with Haman and 
almost the complete extermination of the Jews because Saul did not obey. So that was one thing. We went over some of the things that cause people to get offended easily, unresolved or unhealed emotions, self-conscious about things. Those were some of the things. Then we went to uh, uh, Paul and Barnabas, right? He was originally Saul of Tarsus. And does anybody remember what the offense there was? Who was here last was week? When... Go ahead, Linda. Okay. It was when John left. Um, they had a really hard time be going around in ministry. And I'm guessing that he just got scared and left. Exactly. So they went on, Paul and Barnabas, the son of encouragement, went on their first mission trip. Okay. And they were evangelizing. That was an evangelism uh, trip. And we hear, we uh, read about this account where Paul was casting out demons. Don't know if that scared Mark. We don't know. The Bible doesn't tell us why, but he was like, peace out. I'm out of here. And that did not sit well with the apostle Paul. So then just two chapters later, he says, hey, let's go back to those places where we planted churches, where we evangelized. And Paul and Barnabas was like, sure, let's go. But I'm bringing my cousin Mark. And Paul was not having it. He's like, this is serious work. He could we need dedication. I mean, that's what we think that he must have been thinking. And he, a sharp disagreement happened between them and they split. OK, so that's the summary of what happened. All right. Now, let me yeah. share my screen so we could go through today's lesson. Uh, and forgive me that I'm kind of struggling here with. Where to share my screen? Ah, there it is. <laughs> OK, the green button on the bottom. There ha, 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 ha. All right. Hopefully I got the correct one. Nope, I don't. You see water. Yeah, you do. It's come up. It's come oh, up. really? Oh, it, it, was up. The cor it was the yeah. correct one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was, yeah. Bring it back up. That was good. I am. I am. There you go. Okay. Now Wonderful. All right. So we talked about... What makes people susceptible to being offended? We showed those two case studies, and now we're going to talk about the consequences of offense. Okay. So, oh, and I need Bible readers, and I'm going to pick the same two people. <laughs> so, Jacob, if you would... Look for 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 14 to 23. That was the other thing that I did. I, I would have people read passages of scripture because I want you to have the context. Uh, like I had said last week, you're not going to catch me take one verse and expand for 40 minutes on one verse. This, this context, I want you to get the, the cultural, the, the biblical, the spiritual environment. Okay. You got it? Go ahead. Now the Ruach Adonai had departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from Adonai terrified him. So Saul's courtiers said to him, Behold now, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord now command your courtiers in your service to search for a man who is a skillful player on the harp. Then whenever the evil spirit from God comes on you, he will play with his instrument, and you will feel better. So Saul said to his courtiers, find me someone who can play well and bring him to me. One of the young men answered and said, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing music. He is a mighty man of valor, a warrior, prudent in speech, a handsome man, and Adonai is with him. So Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, send me your son, David, who is with the flock. So Jesse took a donkey, loaded it with bread, a bottle of wine and a young goat and sent them with his son, David to Saul. Then David came to Saul and became one of his attendants. 
Saul loved him greatly. So David became his armor bearer. Then Saul sent word to Jesse saying, let David now keep attending, attending me for he has found favor in my eyes. It came to pass whenever the spirit from God came upon Saul, David would take the harp and play it with his hand. So Saul would find relief and feel better as the evil spirit departed from him. What version was that? I'm just curious. Uh, Tree of Life. Okay. So I don't want you guys to be troubled because it says, a dis well, one version here, the New King James says a distressing spirit. Tree of Life says an evil spirit from the Lord, from Adonai, troubled him. So I want to encourage you. Remember, Adonai is the God of spirits and he rules over them as he sees fit. He is sovereign. So it is written that disobedience brings curses in Deuteronomy 28 and that obedience brings blessings. We already just went over the disobedience that Saul did by not killing all the Amalekites as he was instructed. So and the fact that it almost could have led to the extermination of the Jews. So that should not surprise us. Uh, the other thing is that it's remember Saul eyed David from that day forward. And the point I want to make here is that once you're offended, it opens doors to other evil spirits. So suspicion and distrust entered the heart of Saul toward David. What are the consequences? We read uh, in 1 Samuel 16 that he had this continuous pursuit of David that and the spirit of murder entered his heart. He even killed some priests. You can read that in 1 Samuel 22. So now we're seeing a, a gang of spirits starting to develop. We've got suspicion, we've got distrust and a spirit of murder. And suspicious and, dis and distrust, they breed fear. So that's yet another torture, torturing spirit. And it all culminated with him see having the desire to seek another form of comfort. When we don't go to God for our comfort, we're going to go somewhere else. And so he consulted a medium. And you can read that in 1 Samuel chapter 28. So offense is dangerous and it can attract other evil spirits into our lives if we give it a foothold. It destroys friendships, it ruins marriages, it divides groups. I'm not gonna personally own the disaster that my marriage was, but my offense played a part in and destroying it, okay? So be careful, address it quickly. Don't let it fester. I'm, speaking of marriage, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have Rebbitson read this, okay? Can you see that? Mm -hmm. I can. A man and his wife had a quarrel. Oh, I can't hear you. A man and his wife had a quarrel. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, good. And there was strife and offense between them. And the Holy Spirit nudged the man to apologize to his wife, but he refused and was being stubborn. As they were lying down, the man couldn't sleep. And at about 2 a.m., the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, look at what you have allowed into your house. And in an open vision, this man saw a large, fierce-looking demon spirit wearing armor. The man could see each piece of armor and understand its symbolic meaning. The spirit wore a he helmet of pride, of bitterness, and a shield of hatred. Right. Whoops. Of pride and a breastplate of unrighteousness. Oh, thank you. Breastplate of unrighteousness. He carried a sword of bitterness and a shield of hatred. From his belt hung a hammer of judgment, a cloak of deception, and his feet were shod with boots of anger. Wow. Very negative. 
very, very destroying. Any, does anybody want to share anything or how this is making you feel or what you can see in your own life at this point? Well, I know that. I think, yeah, I would like to, I would like to share that. I think that, okay, this image right here that you see the image, it's like, we know the, the armor of God. And you see the armor of the devil kind of here in this evil spirit. But what's interesting is is what you you highlighted just a bit ago. You said that when you stand in a fence towards something, you open up the door to other evils in our lives. And it, it just doesn't it starts with just a simple offense. And by doing that, it's 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 amazing how we can allow other things to come in and fester in. Before you know it, you're thinking bad about somebody, you're hurt. You're responding. Your first, your first initial thing is, you know, when somebody offends you, you feel hurt. So you take that hurt and that self pity, and then you start to, to react on it. But then you don't realize that your reaction to it is not a godly reaction. It's a bad one, and then it opens up doors to many others. So it's kind of like it's a, it's kind of like it's like a pit that you're falling into. You every time you carry an offense, you go farther and farther down into this pit and you see destruction just along its way. And that's kind of what I'm reminded about here when I see the different weapons here on this evil spirit. It's very much spiritual. Very. That's, mm -hmm. that's the point. It's very much spiritual. And if we don't get rid of it, it'll hinder us fulfilling our destiny in Christ. It's that serious. First, Understand that it's inevitable. You're going to be offended. Offenses will definitely come. And that is partly because of what I said last week, what my mom used to say. Cada cabeza es un mundo. That's in Spanish. Every head is its own world. That means every person has its own, their own perspective, opinions, and people are not going to do and say things as you would. Okay, so that's going to bring offense. Some may do it intentionally. Linda wanted to add something there real quick. Yeah, one thing that kind of stood out for me um, was that Saul really loved David when he was um, ministering to him and trying to get rid of those evil spirits through the music. But it's so interesting how it turned so violently against him, against David. Yes. Yeah. Yes, almost like he couldn't control it. He was he he was possessed. <laughs> he was possessed. Um, but anyway, when people offend you, sometimes they may be doing it intentionally, and sometimes they may be completely unaware. Okay. So what? How can we overcome offense? This seems pretty intuitive and common sense, but it's our call. Grow spiritually. That will strengthen you to the point that you start making excuses for people. Oh, maybe they weren't feeling well. Maybe they're going through something. Maybe they had a fight with their spouse. You start letting that be more of your first reaction instead of harboring, starting to harbor resentment. Think of Stephen as he was being stoned. He was praying for his enemies. And of course, Yeshua on the cross prayed Lord, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. My dad would teach me, pray for your enemies. And I encourage you to pray for your enemies. He would say, who's giving you trouble at work? <laughs> Give me their name. I'm going to I'm going to bring them to prayer. You know, pray for your enemies. It's a best practice in this sanctification journey. So how do we Jacob, do? Jacob, you have your hand raised. Oh, hold on a second real quick. We have a hand raised. Yeah, Good. I just, and when you were talking about that, felt very led to talk about this. And my question for everyone is, can you really forgive those people who did those things to your own people in the past? Like, I remember I was sitting before God and I said, he's like, can you forgive the Nazis? I was like, I forgive Adolf Hitler. I forgive the Nazis. I forgive every single person that hurt my people. And the reason is, <laughs> is because I know that those people, even Adolf Hitler, is going to stand before God and he's going to get put on the right or the left and that he's going to burn on fire forever or not. And I know when I look at Adolf Hitler and everything he did, I'm like, man, that dude's probably going to burn on fire forever 
And I just feel like such an intense like mourning because that's one of God's children, whether you like him or not, that's one of God's children. And the same thing for all the slave owners and everyone else, every single one of those people had choices to make. And every single one of those people were given the, the gospel and were shown Jesus. And it's our job to forgive those people because if we can't forgive those people, God's not going to forgive us because all of them are going to be judged at the end. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so praying for our enemies also means that they will come to the knowledge of Jesus and teshuva or turn away from their sin and come to repentance. How other, what other strategies? Well, remember we're made in God's image and he created the heavens and the earth with his word. And so our words are powerful. Not that we're little gods or I'm not espousing that, that doctrine that's out there. I'm just saying we're made in his image as it is written in Genesis. And our words are powerful. There have been scientific studies where they'll take either like a, a strawberry, uh, two strawberries and one the, the person will say, I love you, love you, love you. And the other one, I hate you, I hate you, and say vile things. And the, the one that has all those hurtful words will rot. There have been studies uh, like that or experiments like that. So declare and decree that you forgive the person. No matter how you feel, declare it. In, you know, in the environment, declare it because words are powerful. And then cling to God's word. There's a particular, there's so many scriptures, but I want you, Jacob, to read Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 to 14. It's on the on the slide if you can see it. Sure. So 13 to 14. Okay, so brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I am reminded of one time that Ingrid asked, um, well, how do you, do you, what if you can't forget? Like you, you, you say it, but you can't forget. Well, then the answer is pray for yourself. You won't forget automatically, not usually, okay? Some people are lucky. I've heard people say, there's there's a gal in my Bible reading group that says, it takes me a long time to get angry. <laughs> and I get, I'm like so jealous, you know? But anyway, there are people that are blessed that way. But it's good to learn about these things because if there are people in your life that struggle with offense, you'll get a better understanding what are some of those reasons why they struggle with it. But anyway, if you're struggling with these feelings and memories, and like Ingrid said, you see the person and you feel some kind of way, well, pray for yourself. Take those feelings and, and put them at the foot of Jesus. If you Here's a test, too. If you need healing, if you talk about the offense, or you talk about what happened and it makes you all upset or it takes you to tears or you're sobbing, you're not healed. Bring all that mess to God. Remember, is anything too hard for Adonai? And it may, it may take time, but if you are faithful in bringing those negative emotions to the Lord, he will restore you. He will remove that pain. I found this very interesting, these words to describe offended people. Unassailable, recalcitrant, basically hard, too hard-hearted to hear an appeal. And I think about people that I've offended. I'm not the only one that gets offended so easily. I have offended many people. And I just, I, I can see that in some people that are offended. They become hard, hard-hearted. Proverbs 18, 19, Robinson, if you would read that. A brother offended is more unyielding than a strong city. 
Can you imagine? So a fortified city is easier to yield than, than if you offend your brother. When we are offended, part of it besides pride is that we feel like we have the moral high ground. And so we feel justified in making that person a villain, maybe talking bad about them or complaining about them. I've been guilty of all of that. And I, I, I confess it and I, I, I repent in the name of Jesus. So any, any comments? Does anybody else struggle with offense that would want to fess up <laughs> or share a challenge? Because Rabbi Adrian is partnering with me and, you know, I'm, I'm giving, especially the first session, gave the, the cerebral, the biblical background. I gave some Hebrew words, some uh, Greek words, defining offense, and you can watch the video. But he's coming from a ministerial, you know, um, oh, Esther has her hand up. Yeah, I'm coming from a pastoral perspective. So. A pastoral yeah. counseling background. And we really want people to have breakthrough tonight. And 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 really, it, you know, we'll, we're going to probably pray, I would think, Rabbi. Um, but anyway, go yeah. ahead, Esther. You have your hand up. Can you hear me? Can now, you hear me? Now I can. I'm sorry. Um, I would like to share with the group um, an exercise um, that I shared with my previous uh, church or congregation where, um, by the glory of God, I was part of ministering, hurting people, people that was hurt uh, deeply inside. And an exercise that has helped me and helped others is you go in front of this the mirror, okay? And the first thing that you you gonna look at your did she go mute? Oh, there. Can you hear me? Yes. Now I can. We lost you there, Esther. We you need okay. to say it again. So go before the okay. mirror. Okay. So you go in front of the mirror, and let's say perhaps that the name of the person that offended you, her name is Anna. Let's say that is a woman. And you go in front of the mirror and you start saying, looking at yourself and saying, and I forgive you. And I forgive you. And I forgive you. And you repeat it until you start feeling it in your heart that you are free. You, in, in reality, you are forgiving this person. And then you say to this person, Anna, I love you. Anna, I love you. Anna, I love you. And you repeat it until you feel that you have already let her go. And then you're going to hug yourself. And you're going to hug yourself and you're going to say, say in this case, Esther, I love you. Very, in a very soft voice, gentle and slowly, look at your eyes and then start loving yourself. Say, I love you, Esther. I love your eyes. I love you, Esther. That's that that is an exercise that had helped me personally and helped a lot of people. Uh, God gave me this gift of doing this exercise by revelation. And since I practice this, <laughs> trust me, I do not let this flesh um how you say um cultivate any anger uh any bitterness i don't let that the flesh go further than it's supposed to go with an offense and trust me trust me i have had offenses from my husband that if i tell you you could say why you didn't divorce him and this is what saved my my marriage. Yep. Yeah, amen. I think that's a good start, Esther. I think that's that's always we always want to be at a place where we work through that forgiveness as well. But we're going to talk later on tonight as well as 
taking that additional step and the additional, I think what you shared is really good as far as a first step goes is to start working through that forgiveness in your heart and your spirit at first, but there's a follow through step. And we find that in Matthew 18 and we'll get to Matthew 18. We've talked about it before in previous um, studies, but I think it's important that we follow up on that. And, and, and I'll tell you why it's important when we get to that. But I think where you're at, definitely, I mean, you have to do that on a, on a continual basis, especially in a marriage. And, uh, you know, and, and we have to do that continuously. I know that Linda probably does that with me and I do it with Linda. We have to forgive each other and walk in that forgiveness. Um, uh, but there's also a step to that. And we'll talk more about that. So that, uh, um... we'll go ahead and go on. That exercise, um, it, it lines up well with what, what I said, declare and decree that you forgive them. I'm not, I wonder what the effect of looking at yourself in the mirror is. Like, um, maybe you could tell your own, I'm sure the first time it, it may feel forced and sincere and you're looking at your face, you're, you're almost holding yourself accountable. I don't know. Okay, I'll move on. All right. Other things to remember is not to personalize the offense. I am so guilty of that, taking it all personal, making it <laughs> uh, making it about me. Remember, uh, if others are truly offending you in a sinful way, remember, some people offend and they didn't even, they were ignorant about it. But if they're truly sinful, I want you to remember this. Their offense is against God first and foremost, okay? Sin against us feels personal because often it is personal, but it's significantly more personal to God who doesn't just relate to us, but he made us. So remember that. Maybe some of you um, struggle with a sense of justice, <laughs> You know, and I remember what Marlene said last week, and it, it impacted me. It sounds very easy coming from her, or Sophia has told me that too. We don't have to be right, you know, it, and that is important. You don't have to be right. It's okay. I, I struggled with that. I wanted to be right, and it's it's not worth it. Okay. What's the uh, basis behind that? What's the basis behind being right? I mean, it's really oh, good to say that, but what, what pride? It's pride, <laughs> uh, and pride is pride is what causes us to get offended by things. Pride is what causes us to to really get angry about things when it, all we're doing is protecting ourselves. <laughs> That's really what it boils down to: is we're protecting ourselves. And uh, and I like this that you said starting off is don't don't take it personal. Sometimes people offend you, and they have no clue they offended you. Yep. And other times they offend you on purpose. That becomes huge where you have to take the opportunity to start forgiving them. Um, Esther, you have your hand raised. Go ahead. Esther? She'll come on here. Go ahead, Esther. I'm so sorry. Every time that I'm going to push that to a mute, something happened. Well, I do want to add to what I say that one of the first things before you do any exercise is to remember when you pray to the Father, to Adonai, and you say, Father, forgive my sins, my sins as we forgive or forgive my offenses or my debts as I, we forgive others. That is something that by um, how I can say, not by obligation, but by how you say, Levi, uh, que me impulsa, that takes me to 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 forgive any offense. I mean, how can you go to Adonai? How can you go to the Father and say, Father, forgive me, Father, forgive me? And you're not going to forgive the person that offend you when we offend the Lord almost every day. That I do have to add that because I think that's the most important thing, though, than any other exercise that you can do. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Amen. The second thing, it's good to remember that God has made a legitimate 
a way to deal with legitimate offense. And that is what Rabbi was talking about. We can follow the instructions of our Lord and go to the person directly in the hopes of gaining your brother. And that's in Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Um, Jacob, if you would look for that verse, I didn't put it on the slide. Now, if your brother sins against you, go and show him his fault while you're with him alone. If he listens to you, you have won your brother. But if he does not listen, take with one or two more, so that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may stand. But if he refuses to listen to them, tell it to Messiah's community. And if he refuses to listen even to Messiah's community, let him be to you as a pagan and a tax collector. Yeah, just yeah, just verse fifteen. Uh, just okay. verse fifteen. Right. Just for um, let me add to this real quick is before this, um, because I know that we have some more slides to go through and stuff like this. And Libby's continuing. I don't have a whole the, lot more. Teaching. OK, but I just want to add to this. If you look at the entire chapter 18, the first first uh, uh, nine verses deal with humility. And we just talked about the fact that pride is what causes offense in our lives or it bring pride when we walk when our pride gets stepped on is boy when our cackles go up and when we're ready to start get taking an offense and, and just doing something bad with it the first nine verses talk, talk about humility like a child and then the next verses the 10 through 14 talk about the parable of the lost sheep and i think these are you know there's not these are not by accident these are pretty amazing passages that Yeshua brings in there. Then he talks about uh, the lost sheep, the, and it's better to go to the one and to leave the 99 and go get the one. Oftentimes, uh, when somebody's offended, they'll go to the rabbi and say, Rabbi, you need to deal with so-and-so. Or if if the congregation loses somebody and if somebody will come to me and they'll say, hey, rabbi, I've noticed that uh, so-and-so hasn't been around for a while. You need to go ahead and go get a hold of them. And so what, it's easy for us that when we get offended to throw that offense onto someone else to take care of that for us. And this is what I was saying earlier, Esther, is that it's very important for us to take the steps of trying to win our brother back. So when you look at this, you see humility in the first uh, nine verses, and, and that humility is being childlike, and it's like humbling yourself. Uh, before the Lord, like you said, you always go before the Lord and you ask for forgiveness first and foremost of your sins so that you can forgive those who have sinned against you. That's a great step. Um, but then this next step is going to the person that you've been offended by. And that takes courage and it takes humility because pride says, well, I don't need to go. Or I've forgiven them in our heart and, and it's okay, I've forgiven them and they're not, you know, but they, they keep offending you over and over and over again. So the thing is for us to follow through on that process. And so we're going to talk a little bit more as uh, as um, uh, Libby leads us through here and then we're going to get into Matthew 18 a little bit deeper, okay? Um, but Ingrid, do you have your hand raised? Go ahead, Ingrid. She's finding the unmute button. <laughs> there we go. So there you go. this, thank you. So um, there was someone in my life that I love very dearly that offended me. And Rabbi, um, a couple months ago, when we spoke about offense, what Libby is referring to, this was one of the persons that offended me. And um, this person in the past has cut me off. And um, and then I went back. It's like, you know, like a, like a, like a cow um, chewing his cut again. Anyway, I went back and, you know, I made up with the person and, I said, I was sorry, no, I don't know why, I would, but I just did the right thing. And so this last time when she offended me, she blocked me, she ghosted me, as they say now. And I, I was like, okay, and I was hurt, I was hurt. And I spoke to my son about it, I spoke to my husband about it, anybody would listen out. And then after a while, the Lord was telling me, you know, sometimes I need to move people out of your life, it's okay. 
and and I started to heal. And then a couple weeks ago, a month or so ago, somebody needed help with a job. And guess who I helped to get that job? That young lady. And I was like, okay, fine. I'm leaving it alone. And then um, I went away a, a week or so ago on a cruise, and I came back, and hubby said she's in the hospital. And I was like, what is wrong with her? And he said, I'm not really sure. And I was like, okay, I was with a prayer, and I left it alone. And then one day, I'm in the shower, and I hear the Holy Spirit say, go see her in the hospital. And I was like, no, <laughs> not going. <laughs> and then I heard, I said, I was like, oh, my God, and I'm arguing, I'm getting dressed up. Oh. And I went. When I walked to the door, she was like, oh, they call me Cherry. Miss Cherry, it's good to see you, blah, 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 blah. And I hugged her. And I, I just missed her so much. I love her so much. And then we talked. And I apologized. Again, I apologized in the past. I apologized again. And, and then she said to me, because I, why, were we, why was she upset with me? Because there was something that she was doing that could have cost her her life. And I was fearful of the attacks of the enemy upon her life. And then she said, and when I spoke to her about it, she said, it's not true. And then you know what she said? She said, you were right. I was like, oh, can't believe I'm hearing this. <laughs> she said, you were right all along. And I was like, okay. And then we talked for a while and then I checked upon her a couple of days later. But now I just want to guard my heart. I, I don't want to give no, I don't want to give her the opportunity to do that to me again. So I still love on her, but now I'm guarding my heart. Is that wrong? Help, son. No, I, I think that, oh, no, I don't think it's wrong at all. I think that we have to set boundaries at times. If there's a particular person that continuously offends us and we love them and we truly love them and we've worked things out with them, I think it's okay to set those boundaries uh, that mm -hmm. you just don't, uh, uh, conf you know, you, you don't, uh, uh, what do you call it? confide in that person or you spend much time with that person you don't put yourself in situations where they can offend you um easily uh it doesn't mean that you you dismiss somebody now obviously there are some people we need to dismiss in our lives if they're causing a lot of issues for you or your family or your members you have to protect your family but uh so boundaries healthy boundaries are good and i don't think there's anything wrong with the healthy boundaries mm -hmm. thank you thank you rabbi good job Libby. No. Thank you. Okay, so continue on, Libby, and then we'll go into Matthew 18 here after you're done. Okay. Um, Rebbiton, Proverbs chapter 19, verse 11. Sure. Good sense makes one slow to anger, and it is to his glory to overlook an offense. So rather than overlooking an offense, some of us that struggle with offense, we conjure up every possible infraction. We they're mounting chips on our shoulders. Anything another person <laughs> does that's different than how we would do it strengthens the resolve of the unyielding, hardened heart. I don't have a lot of experience in these and like reconciliations and and this deep forgiveness. But I'm going to tell you of, of, of very, very briefly, I truly, well, I could not remember the offense someone did. I, I knew that I was upset at that person for a long time, but I could not remember. And I have a very good memory. And I thought, how can I even be offended when I can't remember what they did? So I went up to that person and I asked for a hug and they gave me the sweetest hug. And I felt like something in the spirit realm broke. Like it was so liberating. And I highly recommend to the best of your ability, if you can reconcile uh, with people that have hurt you, it is a great feeling. Okay. Amen. God's a standard because he's the only one that can look in the hearts. We cannot discern the motives of each other. So 
let's be free to assume the best. And I'm really preaching to myself, <laughs> assume the best in other people. Trust that God is the judge. He will judge perfectly. I mean, even today we were reading about the new Jerusalem and, and um, the, the righteous kingdom that God is going to establish. It's repeated throughout scripture. He will be a fair judge. Don't worry so much about who's right. I've been wrong. Justice. He's going to give the justice. We can have the good sense to be slow to anger. We can become, I can become gloriously unoffendable through Christ. <laughs> I can do it. Amen. Any Amen. Comments before I, we're almost done. Any comments? Well, no, we're not done. We're almost done with the slideshow, but we got more to cover. <laughs> so it's good. So won't you lay down the offendedness you've nursed against others? And I know about that. I've I've nursed offenses in the past. And rest in the salvation of the Lord, who is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love for us. He is patient in delaying judgment. I'm, I think it was Psalm 46. It says he knows the heart of man, and yet he still lets us live. But judgment will come. Like Jacob said, judgment will come. Today's the day to crucify the counterfeit power of offendedness. And take hold of the gospel, which is the power of God for salvation to all who believe. And that is in Romans chapter 1, verse 16. And that's it for me. Amen. All right. Well, let's uh, go to, uh, there you go. Excellent. All right. So this is really good. Good job, everybody. Thank you, Libby. Did excellent. You did wonderful. Uh, really, really good. Covered a really good basis there and brought out. I think the biggest thing that I got from a part two of this is that when we, when we take an offense by uh, of somebody, somebody who offends us, it opens the door to so much more. It's like our pride gets hurt. We take an offense and then that offense opens up a can of worms if we carry it with us. And you said something at the very end that was really interesting is sometimes we can carry an offense towards somebody so heavily and so long that we can forget why they even offended us in the first place. Or you sometimes, and you know what? Marriages get like that tremendously. If your marriage does not work on the issues that bother them, they go to bed angry and they wake up the following day, they're, they're walking around not really fully free in each other. And another day goes by and another day goes by and another day goes by. Eventually, the, offend, the offense that first started it isn't remembered because you're adding so many offenses as you go along, that many years can go by and you have no clue until, you know, you go through a divorce type thing and all of a sudden one of your spouses is bringing up all the bad things that you did your entire life <laughs> and vice versa. And yet that doesn't mean anything at all. What, what really started it was opening the door to an offense at the very beginning. So let's go to Matthew chapter 18 real quick here again, because I think this is really important. So everybody open up. Uh, Alex, you have a question before we start there? Or are you just putting your hands up? Yeah, yeah, hold okay, on. Yeah, okay. um, is it on something I'm talking about? No. Okay. I, I did want to say something before we, we go to Matthew's 18, please. So yes. I I have practiced, you know, for, since years and years, that the, one of the best way to avoid the offenses is... Okay, praying, praying, then walking all the time in the spirit. If we left that the flesh, you know, gain and overcome uh, instead of the spirit, I mean, we have a two natural, right? Um, the spirit and the flesh. If we feed the, the flesh, then the flesh is going to uh, take, you know, to grow strong 
with all details of the flesh. But if we walk in prayer and we allow that the Holy Spirit dwell in us, uh, be our counselor, be our witness, be our healer, because so many people are, you know, uh, using by Satan to to offend us, even when the person doesn't realize that they, that that he or she is offended us. So we have to be careful, because we if we are very sensitive in the flesh, then we are going then then we are going to be offended. But if we are you know mature, and we walk in the reality of the Lord presence, then we are it's, it's going to be hard to be offended. So when we pray and we say to the Lord, Lord, please forgive, forgive us our offenses as a, forgive offenses as have we forgive those who has you know offended us. And this is our daily our daily bread, our daily pray. Lord, please forgive us our offenses. So if yeah. we meant, uh, keep clean our heart, our heart, if we keep clean our mind, then we are we are going mature and mature from glory to glory. Then we are then we we are gonna be easy target to the enemy to you know to to block our mind with any kind of offenses, right? So this is my my your practice about the the offenses. Practice. I think yeah. No, and I think I think what you say and what, what Esther was saying is really crucial and really important. And I think those are things for us to practice and practice and practice. But as you guys know, I'm I'm an athlete or a former athlete. I'm not an athlete anymore. <laughs> I can golf. That's about it now. Um but before basketball, you name volleyball, you do all those kind of things. We practice and practice and practice, but what do we practice for? We practice for competition and the game, right? We just don't keep practicing stuff. And I'll tell you, when you look at Pro Matthew 18, because this is not the natural thing for us to do. It's not natural for us to respond in a spiritual manner when somebody offends us, except for some of the practices that you talked about, um, uh, uh, you know, you talked about and Esther talked about. Um, Alex is, you know, you, you, we go through the daily prayer and we do that. If we keep our pure, our hearts pure and we keep our spirits pure, it's easy not to get offended. However, let's look at Matthew 18 because this is really important because we are still of the flesh. We are still human. So when you look at Matthew 18, you get to verse 15 and, and Jacob read the first verse for us, but let's look at this again because this is really important. It says, now if a brother sins against you, and you remember I said, uh, Verses 1 through 14 are really crucial to understanding this. When you live in a family or you live in a congregation, you're part of a kahal, you're part of a group or a fellowship of people, you become family, just like your regular family at home. Well, Linda and I just uh, lost a very dear friend of ours up at El Shaddai, who was just a sweet man, um, just a really wonderful guy. I, did, I only got to know him for about two and a half years. Linda has known him for 30 some years and he's just a sweet guy. People in our congregations become like family to us, especially if we belong to that congregation for any period of time, especially after two or three years, you become really connected and, and the longer you've been part of that family. And so you have here where Yeshua says, now if a brother sins against you, okay, this is really important because this is the practice of what we would do in a kahal, in a in a setting, in a, in a spiritual uh, fellowship or a congregational setting. Go and show him his fault while you're with him alone. So this is why it's important for us to not just practice like what Alex said and what Esther said are very good exercises. And those are things that are very important for us to do so we don't get offended. And we want to forgive 70 times 7, the scriptures tell us, to forgive our brothers. However, if they're offending you and they're a close brother, they're going to continue to offend you. So you're going to have to continue to walk this process of forgiveness on your own end. There comes a point where you eventually have to approach that person and say, listen, I I, I need to talk to you about something, brother, because you've brought, you've, you've offended me several times in this, and I've seen that it's possible.
possible for you to offend other people in this way. And if you're willing to hear me out, I'd love to speak into this if you don't mind. Why is this important? This is important for our growth in Messiah. This is truly important for our growth in Messiah. If I just practice dribbling and I just dribble, 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 and I dribble all the time at my house and I never apply that dribbling to real life circumstances, I might be a good dribbler, but I don't know if I'm good dribbler underneath uh, the fire, if so to speak. So, or during an actual game. So, but we do want to practice, but we've always practiced for reality. And sometimes the reality is that you could forgive your brother or your sister who offends you over and over and over and over again without them knowing. But there comes a point of growth on your end and a point of growth on their end. And this is part of being that kahal, being that family. Okay, because by doing it, you're keeping somebody from from hell, from you from burning, and you're keeping yourself from having to to grow with that person. And and the Bible does say, as iron sharpens iron, so does one man sharpen the face of his brother. And it basically means the joy, bringing forth the joy of your brother's face. Okay, so we get in here. It says, and if he listens to you, you have won your brother. Amen. And I think a lot of times, like. This is why you do want to practice. This is why you want to do exactly what Alex said. This is exactly why you want to do what Esther said, is that if you've worked out that forgiveness in your heart, by the time you go to your brother, you're not walking as a wounded person that's offended, that's ready to snap at them and to really come down on them and to really come after them. You can actually approach them with the heart of God. And most of the time when you go to your brother or your sister and say, hey, brother, can I can I just share something with you? I feel like you and I are really close here and I just, I need to share something with you. Or sister, I need to share something. When you do that, You've come out of the spirit of, of, of the Holy Spirit, the spirit of God. And many times, if not most of the time, they will actually receive you. And and But it depends. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes their pride keeps it from seeing it. Okay, so then it says here, but if he does not listen, take with you one or two others. Okay, I will call on you guys here in a minute. I see your hands, but hold on, Alex. Okay, let me finish my thought here. And then if, if, what I ha if I don't answer your question... Uh, we'll get to that. But if he does not listen, take with you one or two more. And typically here in whatever uh, translation you have, one or two more, this is really important because I think this refers to a witness. And that witness, lots of times, there's no witness around. When somebody sins against you or they offend you, there's no witness. It's just you and that person. But it's important that we go to the person first and foremost. The witness, I think, is connected to what I really believe is really connected to Exodus. When we in Exodus chapter, uh, what is it? Uh, Exodus 18, I believe, or Deuteronomy 19, but definitely Exodus 18, 13 through 27, when Jethro shows up and Moses is working and doing all this stuff. And Jethro says, what are you doing, man? You're going to burn yourself up. You need to appoint strong, capable men to stand as judges before the people in thousands and hundreds in, in tens, you know, in, in those kinds of things so that they can help carry the load. I think a lot of times if a brother doesn't receive you, you go to an elder, you go to someone in your congregation and say, hey, I need you to just be there as a witness as I stand before my brother and just share something with my brother, but I need you as a witness. You don't talk about it because you still go to that person one-on-one -on -one and you're now you're coming forward. So in our congregational setting, you would probably call on me or Peter or David or or Avi, and you'll say, hey, can I, can I just, I, I need to confront somebody. They're, they've offended me heavily. There was no other witnesses around, but I need you to stand in as a witness. Okay, that's, that's how we would understand the Tanakh with what's being said here. Okay, and they would have understood this in that in the vernacular of that day. Okay, so go ahead, Alex. It looks like you just can't wait to say something. So go ahead. Thank you. I'm getting offended, okay. brother. By the way. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I go think. Ahead. I think, in, on my experience, that is offenses that are very easy, like simple. There is another offense uh, that are difficult. And there is another kind of offense that are impossible, very hard. So the easy is when, when we do something, you know, sporadically, just occasionally. So we can forgive, you know, something like this. Suppose that if I walk on uh, with shoes on my on my house, 
then my wife, uh, she is offended because I didn't take off the shoes, right? But it's not, not all the time. So she feel offended, right? So I said, okay, I come back again and then I put my shoes and then the offense is done, right? So th there is a there is a easy that we can forgive, right? But the problem the problem is that that the offenses that are very impossible when when we talk to this person and the person still you know has a um, impossible to forgive us, and then we 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 come to you know to high uh, to another level to the second level with the witness and still the person doesn't doesn't change it so i think that this is something impossible but for for god there is nothing impossible i think the best way is just pray we we just um go through the, the first step the second step and then my question is, what is the next step? If it, if it is well, still we haven't gotten that we haven't got to that point, so we haven't got to that point. So I appreciate you bringing that up, but we haven't got to that point yet. So okay, okay, uh, you're asking okay. a question that we haven't got to. So that's why I was saying, if you let me finish uh, yeah, okay. my thoughts, you we get to that third point. Okay, Jacob, if you have something that's in line with this, go ahead and ask. But I want us to keep going because I don't. I want to not at the moment. The I want to say something else, but I just want I'm gonna let you finish. Okay. Well, has it got to do with an offense? Go ahead. Um, well, it's just kind of having to do with, I mean, this is an issue I've kind of had with the body in general, like for the past three years, which is, it's, as I said, it's going to trail off into something a little different, which is why, anyway, let me just go with it. So I feel like a lot of people blame things on the devil, like too much, like they blame things on the devil too much. They say, the enemy is attacking me. I'm getting attacked. This is terrible. I'm getting attacked. But I want you to kind of imagine that God is, God is always trying to make you stronger. He's trying to strengthen you. Now, let's say you're in a gym and you're lifting weight and you're, you're benching, right? And you're benching this weight and the devil goes up to God and he says, you know, God, I bet if I slip these weights on here, that's too heavy for him to carry that. And we're just about always going to get crushed he's going to curse you. And God's like, this is my close friend. He's very loyal to me. I don't see it happening. Go for it. God has to give the devil permission for everything that he does. The devil has to go to God for permission for everything that he does. So you're about to get crushed by those weights. In that moment, you can either choose to curse God or say, God, I love you. Please help me right now. And when you do that, that finger will go under the weight and he'll help you lift that weight. And it'll go right back onto the bar. And he said, see that trust? That man is a righteous man. And in those moments, if we look at it as if God is testing us, and not that they were getting attacked, because God's trying to refine us in those areas. And he's not trying to, you know, like the devil's attacking us sort of, because God's allowing him to do that so we can become refined in those areas so he can make us stronger. That's the whole point. God is sovereign. He's in control of all those things. And when it gets to be too much for you, that's when he pulls the plug or he lets you give into it and he says, get back up. That's what I really feel that God is, whenever you're getting attacked, you look at it as God is testing me, you will pass. Yeah, amen. So, thank you. Um, so amen. yeah, so I don't know how that fits in with what we're talking about. Everybody just hold off on all your questions and stuff. But That's what I was saying. Um, <laughs> The key is the key. I don't know why you raised your hand. Anyhow, it was like that's off the the subject, but it's okay. <laughs> but what you did say and what Alex said is important. Okay, one is you don't blame everything on the devil. That's what you said. And what Alex said too is there's easy offenses, and then there's hard offenses and almost impossible offenses. And and sometimes in those situations you just have to pray. So that's kind of what Alex says. I would agree with him. If somebody offends you and it's an easy offense, somebody just does something. They're Let's just say something stupid or silly. You see them wearing jeans to congregation and you don't believe they're jeans to the 
to the congregation or to services, and that offends you. That's an easy offense. If that's something that you can just let go, let it go. Pray in God to give you a better heart, to give you a humble heart for that, to understand that. Okay, so that's an easy offense. Or somebody, you know, they dyed their hair purple and you hate it. Okay, that's not, you know, if they offend you because they dyed their hair purple, then you have an issue. And that's where you do what Esther says. You have to start working through that process in your own heart and your own life. And that's an easy offense. But when it gets to a difficult offense, and again, because it says here, if a brother sins against you, so if a brother, so this is talking about a very close connection here, very close, um, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, fellow, uh, uh, not connection, uh, relationship, okay? So it says, go to them, and if you want them over, you want them over, okay? Now let's look at it, but if he does not listen, this is verse 16, but if he does not listen, take with you one or two more, which I believe is, is an elder or, or someone of reputable, capable ability, okay, to stand by, by, the, that, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every uh, word may stand. This leads us into Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 15, and it talks about the witnesses at the gate along with the elders and that let everything be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. So this is really, really important. What does that mean by let everything stand or let everything get established? What it's saying here is that if you have a legitimate offense against a brother and he's refusing to listen to you, and this is something that is very difficult, but you have to deal with this, then there's somebody that is standing in in as a witness, not as somebody who's trying to make a judgment at this point. They're just standing there in witness that you have an offense against the brother, and then they they're, you work it out. But here's what it says. So that by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may stand. This is how it connects us with Deuteronomy 19. But if he refuses to listen to them, tell it to Messiah's community. And if he refuses even to the Messiah's community, let him be to you as a pagan and tax collector. Alex, you asked what the third step is. The third step is if he's refusing to listen, uh, and we're talking about a truly offense here. Now, let's say, okay, for let me just give you an example. About a year and a half ago, we had a brother that was making moves in on a couple of women in our congregation. Okay, just, you know, subtly asking them out for dinner, whatever like that. But it got a little bit more than that because they started asking married women out to dinner. Or, you know, it's like, what the heck are you doing here? So, so one of us went to him and said, Hey, what are you doing? Um, well, I'm just, I, I, I need friends and da, da, da. Well, you don't have guy friends. You have to go to every girl in the congregation to get a friend or something. Well, yeah, but I, I missed that companionship. And then said, so, but one of the women, okay. So one of the women felt like, uh, like he was saying, let's go out to lunch and then come over to my house type of thing. <laughs> like what to play cards, you know? So, <laughs> so anyhow, what happened was I had to I had to talk to this person and basically he refused to listen. After I talked to him about this and said, hey, listen, I think what you're doing here is kind of the wrong approach here. And the person continued. So this is about two and a half years ago, maybe now, two years ago. Um, he continued to go to single women in our congregation. The, and then I brought before we sat down with a couple of elders and we talked to this person. Okay, at this point, the person still refused to do it. Now, at this point, as, as elders, we had to say, listen, you have a choice here. You can find another fellowship. You can leave or we have to bring you before the commune, before the body of Messiah. Basically saying we have to get up front and we have to simply say, and Alex, this is where the third step is. We'd have to say, listen, this particular brother has offended someone, has continued to offend somebody, has not repented of their offense, does not choose to repent of their offense, They've stood before the elders and that we choose and to forgive an offense. Therefore, we bring it to you as a congregation and we have to simply say that we've made a judgment to ask this person to be no longer part of Beth Yeshua Messianic community. Okay. Has that happened at Beth Yeshua? It has. It has. Prior to me coming, it's happened since I've been there. Um, it hasn't got to that last step. I was part of a couple of congregations in the past that it got to that step. Uh, for instance, uh, one one was a situation where we had a lesbian that was attending, and she was trying to pick up very similar to what this guy was doing, very similar going to women in our congregation, trying to get them to go out with her. And then she actually was trying to pick up on the pastor's wife one time, and it led to this situation where we had to expel her from the community. 
Okay. And so you, it, there are times where offenses get so heavily and so difficult that we have to pray. But the, there's other passages that go along with this, that if this happens and you hand them over to Satan, you pray for them. And believe it or not, I've seen, I've seen tremendous things take place out of this, where the person that has been asked to leave the community and be treated in a way that is as a pagan, uh, they end up repenting and coming back. And not all the time, but I've seen many of them come back and repent. But this is one of those offenses where it's like, if this is something that becomes so heavily that you've, you've forgiven them and you've done it 70 times seven, you it's, you've done everything you can, but they continue to offend you. And you've gone to them many times. And I would say it, you should go through the first step many times. Don't, don't go just once and then say, well, okay, you didn't listen. All right, I'm bringing an elder next time type of thing. It, it's not something to try to get in there and destroy somebody. It's trying to bring reconciliation. And so the second time you come in, you establish that, that situation by a testimony or two or three witnesses. Then at that point, it comes before the community. But you hope it never gets to that point. But it does get to that point from time to time, depending on the offense, especially if that person is not willing to repent of an offense. Um, and you know what happens a lot of times though in today's world, what what is practiced more often than not is the person who gets offended, they just leave, they just leave the congregation. So we never really see things get to the third the third step here, Alex, and other people. We don't see that because a lot of times when somebody gets offended, they just leave. But it, and that's sad too because they're not growing in the Lord. And you're not growing in the Lord because you're not dealing with stuff that is very difficult. And if we really are a family. And we really go after the not the one out of the 99. And that's what, when you look at Matthew 18, it deals with that. It's talking about the 99 and the one. If you really go after the one, that means you stay part of the community of God because you are just as important as everybody else in that community. So we learn how to deal with offenses. We learn how to take it to the next level. Like Libby was saying, when you open up that door to being offended and you leave, you're offended. So now you just leave. Now you go to another congregation and they say, oh, weren't you part of Bethany Yeshua? For yeah, but they're a bunch of jerks. Blah, 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 blah. Now you just open up the door to slander and gossip, right? And uh, you see all those things that happen like that. Um, and and when that happens, uh, it opens up doors to even more stuff. So it's one thing after another, after another, after another. So the the important thing is, is that if you are offended and you find yourself fleeing away from that offense and not dealing with that offense, you might want to stop and grow in the Lord and allow yourself to grow and take that offense to that person and say, okay, Lord, give me the wisdom, give me grace, give me humility. This person has offended me over and over and over. And Lord, I've forgiven them 70 times seven. I've forgiven them as many times as I possibly can, but I'm getting hurt in my spirit. Oops, can you grab the plug in, please? That's over there for this, please, so we can plug it in. Um, I forgive them. I forgive them in my spirit. I forgive them um, in everything. But Lord, I'm just struggling with this. Don't be surprised if the Lord says Matthew chapter 18. Don't be surprised if the Lord says you need to go to that brother who has offended you. Now let's go on real quick here because I know some of you may have some questions, but let's try to finish this up before we do questions. Okay. Uh, amen, or so be it, I tell you, whatever you forbid on earth will have been for, forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will have been permitted in heaven. It's on the other side of the room. Thank you. Hold on a second, guys. Linda's just plugging in the uh, the computer. It was starting to lose some power there. Thank you. Um, so what it's saying here is this is halakha. This is what we call in Jewish circles to establish halakha, how to, how to walk in God's ways. And one of the ways that we walk in God's ways, and it says, I tell you, whatever you forbid on earth will have been forbidden in heaven. Whatever you permit on earth will have been permitted in heaven. Lots of times this is used among Pentecostals as, as, as binding and loosing or casting out demons and all this kind of stuff. But this is really an establishment of making Jewish law, so to speak. That's what Halakha stands for. So so when, when two witnesses or two elders stand up in a congregation and they say, we have, we have made an established testimony here that so-and-so is no longer part of Beth Yeshua Messianic congregation because of such and such. If we don't have to go into detail, you just simply have to say that. The Bible tells us that in that situation, 
what you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. God will. That basically means that God is going to stand behind you when you make this statement. Okay, and that and whatever you permit on earth will have been permitted in heaven. So when you forgive someone by you forgiving them, you've established that in heaven as well. Therefore, God will forgive them and God will forgive you. Okay, again, I say to you that if if the two of you agree on earth about anything they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two are gathered together in my name, there I am in their midst. Again, a lot of times this is used in church circles as praying, as prayer. You know, we got to, if two of us agree on this, it's going to happen in the spiritual realm, but they're missing the context. The context is, is establishing halakha, establishing Jewish law when it comes to being offended by your brother and sister and to making a judgment on that judgment that is really important one way or the other, good or bad. So anyhow, I probably opened up a lot of worms there or a can of worms for some of you guys. But really what it's talking about here, guys, is that if it gets to stage three, Alex, and you asked about that, what is the next step? If it gets to stage three and you have to hand this person over to the world system, you basically have asked this person to leave and it gets to that point, then God is gonna stand behind you with that judgment. That's pretty powerful. And in Jewish circles, we call that a Beit Din, a house of judgment. And that was practiced throughout the Second Temple Judaism all over the place. So uh, that's what Messianic communities practice in the days of the, of the Bible. And this is why Yeshua says, if this brother offends you, go to them and bring a witness, bring an elder, bring in a, a capable, an able person, and a person who is wise and who can make a righteous judgment and also just stands as a witness. So this is really important, important uh, governing over church matters. Um, but again, this has to do with offense. So uh, it's pretty powerful. I like I like what Esther said and I like what Alex said. Deal with it, get it over with, walk in the spirit so that you don't get offended. Forgive your brother 70 times seven as many times as you possibly can. But if it's a continual offense or if it's a very, very bad one, for instance, this would be a bad offense, okay? If a man walks up behind a woman in our congregation and spanks her on the butt and they are not married, okay? That's a huge no-no. Now, I'm using that as an example. That's a no-no. Now, some women would not say anything. Now, Libby might turn around and punch him. <laughs> And Linda would turn around and punch him too. Even sweet little Linda, sweet little Linda, little Linda. She'll be like, <laughs> okay, okay. But the thing is, is that's a huge thing. Now nobody sees this, and the person does this in the kitchen or let's say in the hallway where nobody's looking or something like that. And now you're just like, oh my gosh, what do I do with this? What do I do with this? You feel ashamed. You feel embarrassed. You feel like, oh my gosh, should I even go to the elders about this? Okay, now what you need to do in this situation, you can't go to this person one-on-one -on -one now. They've broke a boundary that happened in a quiet place that you can't go to them one-on-one -on -one in this situation. You can't do it. Therefore, you need to bring an elder along with you and say, listen, I have to confront somebody about something that they did. I'm not going to tell you what they did because I'm supposed to go to this person one-on-one, -on -one, but I need you there as a witness because it's a very serious thing. Now, if you came to me as one of the elders, or you came to Peter as one of the elders, we or David, we probably say, okay, sure. We'll say, okay, what's it about? And if you feel like, okay, I don't, I don't want to share it yet because I haven't shared yet with them. I just need you to stand by as a witness. Then we'll say, okay, that's great. And because it's it's a male and I'm a female, oh, and then instantly I would go, okay, absolutely, I totally get, I understand you. And I think Peter would do the same. I think Rabbi David would do the same. I think Avi would do the same. So then you approach that person. You say, listen, when we were alone in the hallway and nobody was around you walked by me and you slapped me on the butt and i just feel like that was really inappropriate and ungodly and it's not a brother and sister situation and that and i don't feel like i've never given you permission to do that you are not my spouse and that's just a no-no and i can't handle it now that person right there and then repents of it and says man i am absolutely sorry i'm so sorry for that uh if you if it was around me as the rabbi i'd be like shocked <laughs> I look at it and go, what? <laughs> you know, at that point, I might say, okay, brother, you cannot do this. Okay, but if it happens again, and it happens again, this matter has already been established. And then it establishes by two or three witnesses. And if it happens again, someone else complains about it. Okay, then at that point, we have to take it to the next level. We have to deal with this person. And, and that's how we have to do it. And 
it's important that we do those kinds of things. But unfortunately, like I said, in today's world, it get uh, when people get offended, they leave. They leave. And you don't know they're offended. Most of the time, you have no clue because they don't tell anybody. Or if they tell somebody, they've told somebody else, and now it becomes slander on their end, or it becomes gossip on their end. And then that becomes, uh, then what happens is you're bearing false witness. And in the Old Testament, if you bared false witness against a brother or sister in the Lord, guess what? You were destroyed. And the Bible says, destroy the, the evil from among you without uh, tears, basically, without uh, without mourning, without, I mean, he's basically a tooth for tooth and a knife for knife. He's saying, don't, don't mourn over this, the evil from among your midst. It's pretty powerful when you read it and you go look at those things in the Tanakh. Libby, your hand is raised. My sister Rebecca wants to say something. Rebecca from Oh, me. okay. No, what I was wondering is, let's say that happened, what you just said. Thank you. What, let's say that happened, what you just said. And that person brings you in and says that person smacked the person on the butt, right? And the person says, I didn't do that. And they lie in front of you. But the other person knows that that's what they did. Then what happened? Well, at that point, so you just have to, you have to go and tell them my lie. So that's why I'm asking you that. What's that? Someone might be ashamed and say, I didn't do that. Like when you're confronting the yeah. person. Yeah, and the, the key happen. is in one of those situations. The key in one of those situations like that is you have to, um, it becomes a matter now where a rabbi has to make a decision based on that. And, and to really confront the person and say, listen, you're denying this, but this is a pretty se severe charge. Mm -hmm. um, we did have a situation where a woman felt like she was inappropriately touched one time. And uh, we went back and looked on the uh, the cameras at the congregation. And the woman had felt weird, felt like, like somebody was misappropriately touching them. Um, but when you look back at the camera, the person wasn't doing it at all. The person was just standing there talking with another person. And they're, they were kind of a heavier person like me. And they're really just rubbed up against the chair that this person was sitting on. But that person didn't look back, didn't look behind, didn't want to know who it was, but felt like, she was inappropriately touched. But when we look back on the camera and we and we I, I then I brought that forth to this person, she says, Okay, good. I'm glad that that wasn't the situation. I misjudged him. So we got to be careful with these kinds of things because it doesn't always flow this the, the right way. But in a situation like this, if if that woman truly felt like she was spanked, you know, or slapped and something, and it was an inappropriate thing, then I would be, I take that very serious. We have to take it very serious. And I would approach the guy. And after the conversation, if we didn't resolve it at this point, then um, we would probably take it to the next step of sitting down with the elders and this person and that person. And if, if you get to that point, the person's going to either be serious about it or not. If the person is not willing to sit down with the elders, the man, is not willing to sit down with the elders with this person who this woman who tried to come to him and say this but that tells me something just that action itself tells me that the person's guilty because they're refusing to even stand before a group of elders or a bait den to to settle the matter does that make sense to you guys you guys understand what i'm saying um you guys remember when solomon had to split the baby in half and the woman was like the one, the the real mother's like, no, please, please just give the baby over. I mean, they'll go to extremes, right? So, you know, she went to the extreme, just give the baby to her. And then at that point, Solomon knew that the baby belonged to her because she was willing to uh, not sacrifice the baby when the other mom said, go ahead. Yeah, cut the baby in half, give her half and I'll take half. It's like a mother, a real mother would not do that. And so Solomon saw that. So if a man that was accused of something like this, that was not willing to take and sit down with the elders, then at that point, I would consider that person to be the liar and the woman to be telling the truth. And at that point, because he refuses to listen to the elders at that point, then I would simply ask that person, uh, they have a choice to either repent of this uh, with the sister before it gets to the next step where we have to ask you to leave the congregation. Okay, so hopefully that answers your question. Um, I, I want to say something else that is about the, the topic you are talking about. The, the sexual ceremony is not accepted in 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 is not accepted in in 
in no place. There is no place where it's accepted the ceremony of sex. Even in 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 our work, in in my office, in in the place where I where where I work, we constantly have you know oh, modules that are that that sort of is, is conference about you know how is. Um, this offense, this the sexual uh, ceremony is condemned, is not accepted. Right. Even I, I, I never knew that that this this is the case in 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 our congregation or in an, in any congregation, right? <laughs> well, un but this... unfortunately, we get that. Yeah, we we get that happening quite a bit, Alex. Sometimes not a lot, but it does happen. But the thing is, too, though, is I've seen in in the workplaces, like in the marketplace at, at jobs where somebody doesn't like someone and they accuse them of doing something sexually, like a sexual harassment or sexual harassment type of situation. And that person has lost their job and it was all done because this person didn't like them. And so HR believed the person uh, to make the accusation. Sometimes people's careers get ruined and they didn't do anything wrong. So just because a woman said, cries wolf doesn't mean it happens all the time that way, right? So you, it's very important that you have to cover all these bases. But typically, when you have a bait den, not an HR, uh, you know, home uh, 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 HR's uh, what, um, human resources, instead of having human resources, you have a bait den at a congregation. And sometimes these things work themselves out way before they get to the bait den, the house of judgment. But uh, uh, Rebecca, you had your hand raised again real quick. I don't come back to you, Alex, because I think you had more you wanted to add to that. But, but yeah. Rebecca, did you want Yes. Um, I like what you said, but there's sometimes um, it don't happen in like a church setting. And then sometimes like for me, I have had to deal with people that um, that, yes, they offended me. And yes, I brought it to them. And then they just cause more commotion and try to act as if it was like something that I, you know, that I did or the person that I am. And it was like all false accusations and they knew it too. And you know what the Lord told me? The Lord told me to just be humble. And I was humble and I said, Lord, forgive me for getting offended because really I already know what's happening in this person's life, what's happening in this person's life. So they have, they have a lot of demonic things going on in their life. And I said, I know that. So I forgive, I forgive them, but forgive me for even getting offended. And you know what? I'm able to deal with these people and not get offended by them anymore and not yeah. feel any way because I said, you know what? It's just like Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. And I take that. Yeah very seriously like you know what there's people out there that they actually do not know what they're doing because they have um a spirit that is not of god and no matter what yeah. they want to be right and if it's not about being right they just um sometimes people will not like you for whatever for no reason at all but then when they need you they'll ask you oh could you please pray for me and you know what I pray for them anyway, and I still continue being kind to them. So I take it like when the Lord told me that, I said, you know what? You're right. I need to be humble, and I need to see what's really happening. You know what I mean? But I just wanted to share that because it has happened to me several times. When In the beginning, I was like, what is going on here? Is this person crazy or something? You know what I mean? <laughs> but it wasn't that. It was like I really had to take a look at really what was happening and what was before me. And I was thankful yeah. um, that I can forgive them and ask the Lord to forgive me for even like getting a little stirred up about it. Where well, I shouldn't have really gotten stirred up about it because I tried to speak with them and I already knew where they were. What you know what I mean? So I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but no, no, it does. It does make sense. Thank you, Rebecca, for sharing that. And I think what we got to be, uh, we have to understand is that sometimes these things won't get resolved. And so it boils down to us having to ask for forgiveness uh, or forgiving that person. And, and the scriptures do say that if you cannot forgive your brother, then I cannot forgive you. 
it's one of those things where it's really wild. You think, okay, God, anything's possible for you. Jacob just mentioned here, but he's on the throne. God can do anything, and he can. But one of the things he chooses not to do is to forgive you if you can't forgive your brother who has sinned against you, which is really wild because it's that that offense that you hold on to without asking God to forgive you uh, or forgive that brother. You know, if you can't forgive them, the scriptures are clear about it, that God says, I cannot forgive you. And it's really wild because we're bound up by that sin. So, Rebecca, that's the right road. If sometimes situations just don't get taken care of, sometimes they don't work out the way we had hoped, or sometimes they don't work out in our favor, the best road at that point is to walk in forgiveness as best as you probably can. I mean, think about Yeshua. He went to the cross willingly, but he also went to the cross unjustly. It wasn't just justified for him to go to the cross. He had to go to the cross to forgive us our sins, but he was spit on. He was his hair was pulled. He was falsely accused. He was he was leading his way to the cross, and he stands there. If there's anyone who's innocent, anyone who's innocent, and anyone who could stand there and simply say, uh, you know, and hold a judgment against everybody and call down fire from heaven and basically say, consume all these people. Okay, Lord, you know, Father, could you imagine? He said, Okay, Abba. I, I tried. These guys are stiff-necked and rebellious. You got to deal with them. I'm done. Boom. We all could have been wiped out. Nobody on this earth would be here. But he took the time to look at this, and he and it says that through the joy of this, that he endured the cross because he he knew what he was going to happen. And he says, "Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they are doing." That's the biggest goal that we can take. Sometimes when we go to HR and things don't work out, I had to say, I know Alex, I saw your hand raised, so I'm coming back to you, yes. and I promised I will. Okay. I saw. You. Hold on a second. I hold on okay. a second. Yeah, yeah. I want to. I want to say, okay. There, there is a. Um, there, there was a situation when I was a security guard in Jackson at the hospital, and a lady falsely accused me, and I got called down to HR. And when I got called down to HR, I said, said what? She said, what? Well, HR, they tend to always take the, the the word of the person who does the accusation. So the person who's making the accusation is sometimes treated from HR as if they're 100% right. Said, that's not at all what happened. And then so I gave my side of the, of, of the view, or I gave my opinion. And they said, okay, well, we just have to let you know it's probably best if you don't talk to this person or whatever. I said, I said that's fine. I really thought we were friends, but I, apparently we're not. But I, that's fine with me. She ended up going to HR again about somebody else with the same accusation. And then she went to HR with the same accusation against another person. Well, all of a sudden, HR got smart after three times here and realized this person's just accusing people because she doesn't like them or because they rejected her and said, I don't want nothing to do with her or don't want to go out with her because of such and such. So they got to see that and they actually fired her for doing that. OK, so then in that way, we were justified. All three of us guys were justified because I doubt that they they were in that fault, too. But the fact that she had gone to HR on three different guys about something that didn't happen at all was like, wow, OK, what is going on here? So sometimes it takes the character of a person to be revealed for an offense to actually take its place. But in this whole situation, I had to say, uh, you know, uh, good night, good night, Esther. Uh, but we had to do that. But let's go ahead and end with your question, uh, Alex. Okay. Just so you guys will all know, um, just before Alex, uh, Jacob takes and he's going to edit them down and they will be on Facebook. I mean, uh, YouTube and we'll have there. And then uh, Libby put out a, or a text uh, uh, or a chat here that she will make sure she gets these connected to everybody who needs them or whatever. So we'll take care of all that. But go ahead, Alex, uh, and then we'll end after Alex's question. Okay. I think, you know, in summary that the offenses, God has everything in control and he allow, allow us to go through the offenses just to purify our heart to strain our spirit, our our soul, it's it's um, it's something good finally because we grow and and we walk in, in you know in in, mas in maturity in, in maturity. But I want to to give this advice to the, to the congregation and, the, and and to the and to the and, and to all congregation. You know, what is seen, what is defining the world about offenses is for everything, 
for everything that is good. Offenses for preaching the gospel. Offenses if we read the Bible in a in a public in a public uh, you know class class or place. So offenses if we if we we are holy if we offenses if we we go to the church offenses for everything that is good. So so what we are going to do when 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 the war accuses us as um you know as as offensive for for anything that we are doing in in our be in our that is right so so it's just one question is prepare our heart to defenses you know because the lord said when 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 you are going to be bring to the trials because the the devil the devil want to accuse us you know in a court so we just had to present our testimony you know uh, like, like like you said that uh, someone who is who accused it just because for for doing nothing or for doing good this is this is the right. the normal of life right well and i appreciate what you're saying there that's a whole different matter though that's that's not a brother that offended you that's the world come against us yep. and you're right yep. We have to stand. We have to stand strong on it, and it doesn't matter what they say about it. God is our defender. He is our our uh, He is our shield and our fortress. We sh we win them over by the blood of the blood or the the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Right. So we have to stand strong. It doesn't matter what they say and they accuse us of. We may not have a recourse for that. But what we're talking about is really between brothers in a congregational setting, no congregation. uh, like Saul and David. Uh, Paul and Barnabas uh, and and Apollos and Mark, you know, all that kind of stuff. It's brothers, and we have to learn how to deal with those offenses. So we'll close off with Libby saying whatever she's going to say, and then we'll close in prayer. Um, if you guys are interested, I could put my PowerPoint slide set in the chat, and you guys can grab it if you're interested, so you could have the slide. Yeah, yeah we can do that. They will be a... a uh, they will be available though on the on the video when we video and post it. Oh, okay. Yeah, when we do it on YouTube and on chat. I don't know how fast they can do it, but um, they may not be able to pull up the chat here before we're done. Right. To do that. Uh, Make sure yeah. you. So guys, when when they get video, uh, but she has it right here. Uh, she has defense right there. If you guys look to your chat, you guys will see offense part one. It's a PowerPoint there, and offense part two PowerPoint. And just click on that and download it. If you see the little download arrow, you can do it right now and you'll get it. Okay, the download arrow. Okay, excellent. All right, well, uh, you. Libby did a great job. Lots of discussion, excellent, good job. Uh, I, I know we can talk about this more and more and more, but let's give uh, Libby a warm, wonderful thank you and very much. She did an excellent job. And you know what? I'm so thankful that you took you took a lot of time and you put a lot of time and effort into this. And I hope that you will grow uh, with this area. Like you, and you were very vulnerable. You said, listen, I, I get offended I, and I've been offended. I easily get offended. And I'm learning how to grow in this. And I think that's the best thing that we can do as brothers and sisters in Messiah for us to grow in our walk with each other. We have to walk in forgiveness. And I hope that you are strong enough to never get offended by anybody. But uh, the first part of the study on YouTube, oh, David or uh, Jacob's already got it up. So the first part one is already up on YouTube on our, our website, Beth Yeshua forward, or YouTube forward slash Beth Yeshua Messianic Synagogue. Make sure you guys go to our actual YouTube and then you can see the video on there. Um, but anyhow, um, it was great. And I think that as we grow, and this is not to get easily offended, but we get offended. We're fleshly people. Let's walk in the spirit, not in the flesh. Amen. Amen. All right. Avinu Makenu, Father our King, thank you for this study. Thank you for Libby, all the work she put into it. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done. And Lord, we look forward to your continual growth and we give you glory in Yeshua's name. Amen. Hands on the